How can Jesus love such a sinful church? Why does he still love a church that has often failed him? Will he abandon us forever? Or has he given everything to save us from ourselves? Let's look at a heartwarming story of adultery, divorce, and remarriage in Hosea 1 through 3. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take yourself a wife of harlotry, and have children of harlotry, for the land commits flagrant harlotry, forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblam, and she conceived and bore him a son. The recent distress in the church is widely known, but little understood. The conflict is the same in all churches. The authority of Scripture, God's standards versus those of the world. The church has always struggled with idolatry, self-worship, and unfaithfulness to what Jesus and the apostles taught. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I'll punish the house of Jehu for the bloodshed of Jezreel and I'll put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day, I'll break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Jezreel, the fertile valley of Megiddo, is where many battles happen, and a great battle at Christ's return, Armageddon. Faithful prophets were murdered there by King Jehu's family, and it was the place of terrible child sacrifices. We're no different with our abortions. God promises punishment for this bloodshed. Israel was so named because he prevailed with God. Jezreel was so named because Israel had failed to prevail with God. And like a sower broadcasts seed, Israel was to be scattered among the nations. The same is true of unfaithful Christians. Unfaithful worldly churches end up scattered and dying. The faithful remnant are tempted to become like Pharisees, creating burdensome, man-made rules to prevent sin. God wants a change of heart. Like Protestant reformers, Jesus criticized human traditions and praised Scripture. The church has always struggled between fads, tradition, and Scripture. Jesus preached the real answer, changed hearts, repentance. Then she conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. And the Lord said to him, Name her Lo Ruhama, no pity, for I'll no longer have compassion on the house of Israel. When she weaned Lo Ruhama, she conceived and gave birth to a son. And the Lord said, Name him Lo Ami, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. A wealthy nation forgets God and falls into sins. Gomer's second child seems to have been illegitimate. Hosea would have been tempted not to show Gomer pity. The girl's name prophesies the end of God's pity. Israel's infidelity is also pictured in the names of her male and female children. Yet the number of the sons of Israel will be like the sand of the sea, which can't be measured or numbered. And in the place where it's said to them, You're not my people, it'll be said to them, You are the sons of the living God. And the sons of Judah and the sons of Israel will be gathered together. And they'll appoint for themselves one leader, and they'll go up from the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. This may be referring to the second coming, another future day in the Valley of Jezreel, the great final battle in the Valley of Megiddo, Armageddon. Instead of Israel being scattered, the enemies of God will be scattered in that great day of the Lord, including armies from the east. Therefore, behold, I'll allure her, bring her into the wilderness, and speak kindly to her, then I'll give her her vineyard from there, 
in the valley of Achor as a door of hope. And she'll sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. The punishment of national captivity is also called the wilderness. But there God would speak kindly to his people. This is the ultimate result of our sins. A church, having wandered from the Bible, goes into the wilderness of sin. Like a betrayed husband, Christ will speak to her heart. It'll come about in that day, declares the Lord, that you will call me Ishi, hubby, and will no longer call me Bali, lordy, for I'll remove the names of the Baals from her mouth, so that they'll be mentioned by their names no more. Calling him my Lord indicates serving God through fear rather than the love he really desires, revealed in calling him my husband. Fear is how they serve the idol Baal, which translates as Lord. Even the name Baal will be forgotten. Ishi denotes marriage and the youthful love God desires. I'll betroth you to me forever. Yes, I'll betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice, in loving kindness and in compassion, and I'll betroth you to me in faithfulness. Then you'll know the Lord. I'll sow her for myself in the land. I'll also have compassion on her who has not obtained compassion. And I'll say to those who are not my people, you are my people, and they'll say, you are my God. Jesus, God with us, wants to take his sinful bride back and remarry her with a new covenant. This betrothal is unlike the former covenant. It's forever. This new covenant is to know him. Jezreel, scattering, is reversed because God will sow her back into the land of promise. Then the Lord said to me, Go again, love a woman who's loved by her husband, yet an adulteress, even as the Lord loves the sons of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love raisin cakes. So I bought her for myself for fifteen shekels of silver and a homer and a half of barley. Gomer had likely gotten herself mixed up in pagan temple prostitution. According to Exodus 21, a slave's contract was worth 30 pieces of silver. Hosea could only afford half that price and so supplemented it with produce. The price Hosea paid to rescue her was probably all he had. Then I said to her, you'll stay with me for many days. You'll not play the harlot, nor shall you have a man. So I'll also be toward you. For the sons of Israel will remain for many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred pillar, and without ephod or household idols. Afterward, the sons of Israel will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. And they'll come trembling to the Lord and to his goodness in the last days. The church has also wandered from God. Not all traditions are bad, Some are. Jesus condemned the vain traditions of the Pharisees. Protestants recognize that though Jesus often criticized burdensome man-made traditions, he never criticized Scripture. So Protestants believe in sola scriptura, meaning that only the Scriptures are completely trustworthy. The rocky marriage of Hosea and Gomer is a love story Picturing God's old and new covenants, Jesus loves his bride, the church, forgave our unfaithfulness, and gave all to save us from ourselves. Let's remain faithful to him forever.